Welcome everyone to episode two of My Tag Joe Parody. Today's contestants on team one are MIT alumni and past commencement helpers, Kelsey Becker and Elliot Seaman. They would win if the board were all about Olympic sports and viral TikToks. <laughs> On team two are Nick Marmer from the School of Architecture and Planning, who would slay at Weird Al Trivia, and Mary Rose, a special ed teacher in Melrose, and would be killer at five syllable words that end, that start and end with the same letter. Ooh. And last but not least, on team three is Marcia Mora from the MIT Plasma Science Infusion Center. She is a pro at useless trivia, and she is accompanied by Tracy Schwartz, who also works here at MIT at the MIT Activities Committee. And she's super knowledge knowledgeable about 1970s Boston sports, every little detail about them. And here's our host for tonight, Anthony Farrell. Hey. Thank you, Fufi. Thank you so much for that fantastic introduction. And hello to all of our contestants. We are excited to get this game going. Uh, obviously, first of all, before we get started, we do want to do a little tribute to Alex Trebek. Um, a little over a week ago, we lost a great hero of the game show and a titan of our culture. He was always a kind and calming voice, and he reminded us to take joy in the little bits of knowledge that we never thought we'd have a chance to use. While he was with us, Trebek said of Jeopardy, it's a good show. It should and will go on after I'm done. And he told us that the stars of the show are the contestants, all of you, and the game itself. Well, we have some wonderful contestants here today, and we hope that you all agree that we put together a great game for you. And with that, we will show you today's categories once Foofy gets the board up. <laughs> Welcome to Jeopardy! All the music is copyrighted, so we don't have any of it. Today's categories are Meryl's movies, potent potables, false pretenses, colorful language, hot things and revolutions. Well, those are your categories for today, and we're going to start everything off with team one, Kelsey and Elliot. I don't know how you want to choose who's going to pick the category, but I know Elliot doesn't like to. So Kelsey, do you want to start us off? Basically, um, I'll take Meryl's movies for 1,000, please. Ooh. Meryl's movies for 1,000, starting at the bottom. Die Zauberflotte's Der Holerache caps off this 2016 cinematic celebration of musical passion. A very difficult one to put at the front of this game, <laughs> but I do have a buzz in from Kelsey. What is Into the Woods? That is incorrect. <gasps> An inauspicious start to the game for team one coming in with negative 1,000 points to start. But I have good news for you. Uh, our answer that we were looking for was, what is Florence Foster Jenkins? Definitely. Is. Nobody buzzed in, so I wasn't going to wait for a second answer there. Okay. I, I have good news for you, Kelsey. You do retain control of the board. Where would you like to take us next? <laughs> Um, Meryl's movies, 800. Ah, still very confident, are we? Mm -hmm. mm. Hands on those buzzers. In this 2014 performance, Meryl Streep is credited simply as which? Quick buzzing from Kelsey. I think you might be prepared for this one. What is Into the Woods? That is correct. Here is Into Great. the Woods. <laughs> that will bring you up almost to a positive score with a negative 200 points and Kelsey for winning that you can retain control of the board where'd you like to go after that um colorful language for a thousand still betting high on those <laughs> those high value questions prince's 1984 album featured songs let's go crazy when doves cry and this title track kelsey with the first buzz in miss purple rain that is correct. Purple rain. I don't know how the song goes. Do do purple rain. <laughs> I was doing the tune from Chocolate Rain, so you can tell that I don't know the know the song. 
That brings you finally up to a positive number. 800 points and Kelsey still control the board dominating I'm this. Make my teammate choose. No. <laughs> Elliot, you're coming uh, in. Okay. You've been called um, on. Where to next? Uh uh can we can we do hot things for I don't know 600? Sure. Hot things for 600. That's the daily <laughs> double. <laughs> So glad you have positive money for it. <laughs> With our daily double, you two will choose how much you'd like to risk on this question. Category is hot things. Huh? You, you want to do but like all because we don't really have all in. It's time for start a true from daily it's double. Fine. Risking eight hundred dollars on this, so high stakes. Let's yeah, get you. I'd like prompt. to make it a true daily double. <laughs> Whiskey, hot water, and honey make this warm cocktail rumored to help an easy ease a sore throat. And hot toddy? Yeah. What is a hot toddy? Hot toddy. That is correct. Hot toddy. You double your amount of money, bringing you up to uh, $1,600. A fantastic... I'm glad you capitalized on that. You know, it was very important. Those are high stakes. There's only one of them on the board, so... <laughs> Elliot, for picking such a great question that time, <laughs> we're going to have you select the next category. Where to? Uh, hot things for 800. I'm sticking with hot things for 800. This popular counterculture retail store has stuff for gamers, punks, and metal fans, but no stores in any Boston malls. Nick and Mary Rose buzzing in first. What is hot topic? That is correct. Hot topic. Um, I don't have any banter for this one. It's a good store. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be 800 going to team two. Nick and Mary Rose with their first points of the game and control the board for the first time. Where to next? Let's go with revolutions for 200, please. Starting at 200 like a normal person, Nick and Mary Rose. <laughs> In the Fox animated show Futurama, this independence movement fails, becoming known as the Colonial Dust-Up. Nick and Mary Rose with a quick buzz in. What is the American Revolution? That is correct. The American Revolution. The Colonial Dust-Up. Not so important to the Brits after having won. <laughs> that is going to be 200 to Team 2, bringing them up to 1,000 points. Nick and Mary Rose, you retain control of the board. Where are you taking us? Let's stay in the category for 400, please. Revolutions for 400. Oh, is there really another Daily Double? What? <laughs> that wasn't in the when we reviewed it. <laughs> Foofy, is this really another Daily Double or did you click on the wrong thing? Well, we got two Daily Doubles. Congratulations, <laughs> Nick and Mary Rose. <laughs> Oh, we're going to follow Kelsey's lead. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. That's going to be a thousand points on the Make it line a true for daily you. Double a true daily that. double. And we'll give you the prompt. This complex economic shift was brought about by widespread use of steam power and the rise of the mechanized factory. What is the industrial revolution? That is correct. Doubling your points, bringing you up to 2,000 and giving you the lead. Team two doing wonderfully in this in this comeback. You <laughs> still have control of the board. Where to next? Let's go same category for 600. Sticking with revolutions for 600. This 1979 conflict saw the U.S.-backed Shah deposed and replaced with a theocratic republic near the Strait of Hormuz. And I saw Kelsey with a buzz in. What is the Iranian Revolution? That is correct. The Iranian Revolution or the Islamic Revolution. Fun fact, that question... <laughs> As remnants of our testing category, straits, where I listed five different geographical straits, and nobody knew it well enough to enjoy the category. <laughs> Kelsey, you have got, answered the question correctly. You have taken control of the board. Will you be sticking with the revolutions or bringing us somewhere else? Revolutions 800. I'll be a normal person. <laughs> revolutions for 800. This sound collage from the Beatles' White Album 
is the longest track ever released by the band. Tracy, I'm so glad you got a question <laughs> in your category. <laughs> what is Say You Want a Revolution? That is incorrect. Ooh. I'm so sorry. Yeah. We're going to open it up. Does anybody else want to risk it? Does anybody else think they know the name of this sound collage from the Beatles White Album? Kelsey, your hand is raised, but is that because that's what you thought it was, or are you buzzing it again? I'll buzz in. Uh, what is revolution number nine? That is correct. We oh were looking gosh. for revolution number Great nine. Day. I'm so sorry, Tracy. I thought uh, you had it. I, me too. That's 800 <laughs> from team three, but you are not the, you are not the first team to go into negative points. I believe in you. <laughs> But that is going to be 800 to team one, bringing you yeah. up to 3,000 points. Kelsey, you've still got control of the board. I think Revolution's 1,000. Finishing off the category. Like the New England Patriots, this soccer club is owned by Robert Kraft and is a favorite of MyTech customers. Tracy Swartz with the buzz in. What is the New England Revolution? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Brings mm -hmm. you back into positive points. You've got the first points of the game for your team, 200. And you and Marcia have control of the board. Where would mm -hmm. you like to go next? Let's go with um, Merrill's Movies for 200, please. Excellent. Merrill's Movies for 200. This 1982 wartime movie led to Merrill's choice as the 1983 Best Actress at the Academy Awards. Now, I will give this momentarily to Marcia, but I warn you both, do not buzz in before I end the question. Oh, sorry, I did that. Probably should give it to, I'm going to take a guess. I think it's Sophie's Choice. That is correct. Oh, Sophie's sorry. Choice. <laughs> That is going to double your points, Marcia. That brings you up to 400, and now you have control of the board. Where would you like to go next? Um, let's try Merrill's movies for 600, please. Sticking with the category. <laughs> Merrill's first Oscar award was a result of this 1979 film about dueling divorcees. Kelsey with a quick buzz in. What is Kramer versus Kramer? That is correct. Kramer versus Kramer, another movie I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> Let's finish up the category. And that is 600 to team one, and she's going to finish up the category for us, Meryl's Movies for 400. Meryl sang a vivacious version of Voulez-Vous as Donna Sheridan Carmichael in this 2008 flick. Kelsey fast on the buzzer again. What is Mamma Mia? That is correct. Mamma Mia, one of the best musicals of all time. Fight me. Second by Mamma <laughs> 2. Here we come, go again. I'm, I'm actually sad that I, I still haven't seen that I, movie. I have it on DVD. I'll send it to you. I hear Cher was fantastic in it. Sure was. Kelsey, you've still got control of the board, although you can throw it over to Elliot if you wish, because you are on the same team. What are you going to do? They're shaking their heads, so I'm going to make them do it. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Uh, can we can we do uh, potent potables for for six hundred? Do you know what potent potables means? No. Potent I... potables for six hundred. Okay. <laughs> the original recipe for grog, drink of choice for sailors, calls for a mixture of rum and this. A buzz in from Kelsey, a tentative buzz in. I need to buzz in because my roommate's Norwegian. Is it cinnamon? It's rum, cinnamon, and another thing that I know. And <laughs> <laughs> what is tea? Did I do anything in that correct? Neither of those are correct. <laughs> Would anybody oh. else like to risk their points and give it a shot? Anyone else not on team one? I'm not getting any yeses, so we're going to give you the answer. We're looking Red for one. water. Oh. Water. Grog mixed a mix of rum and water to spread out their rations because sailors were limited on how much they could bring with them. I like will not dismiss that cinnamon room. might have been in grog, but it is not the primary recipe. So uh, I will say, Elliot, I'm sorry. 
Kelsey didn't get the question right, so you do still have control of the board. Where would you like to go? <laughs> Can we do potent potables for 800? Sure, potent potables for 800. <laughs> the tropical creme d'anana is flavored mainly with this francophone fruit. Buzzing from Nick and Mary Rose. What is banana? <laughs> it is incorrect. Ah. You, go, you went for the bait. I did. No francophones here. Elliot has buzzed in as well. Uh, what is a pineapple? That is correct. Creme d'anana, cream of pineapple. That is going to be 800 points to team one and 800 from team two. I'm so sorry, Nick and Mary Rose. Elliot, you answered a question, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means. Perfect. You still have control of the board. Oh. Uh, okay, can, can, can I, let's just do potent potables at, uh, for, for a thousand. It's been working for you. Potent Potables for a thousand. The Italian name for this sweet dessert liqueur, often flavored with droop pits, translates to a little bitter. Oh, Kelsey, taking a risk here. What is Aperol? That is incorrect. A very good guess, but incorrect. Not what we were looking for. Anybody else willing to risk their money? That doesn't look like it. We'll show you the answer we were looking for. What is amaretto? Amaretto, oh. flavored with peach pits. Well, Elliot, you've selected three. Kelsey doesn't seem to be stepping in anytime soon. Where to next? Uh, can we do false pretenses for, I don't know, 600? Just go in the middle. Sure, yeah. false pretenses for 600. This dentally challenged military leader never actually had a set of famous wooden teeth. Kelsey with the first buzz in. Who's George Washington? That is correct. George Washington had an impressive collection of teeth. None of them wooden. Some of them human. Some of them ivory. No wood ones. Kelsey, you've answered the question. I'm going to make you make the selection. We have given Elliot enough grief. Where to That's good. Hot things for a thousand. Hot things for a thousand. So you think you can dance judge Mary Murphy was known for praising skilled contestants with this spicy celebration. And now I reveal that I am the only so you think you can dance fanatic. Such a shame. We were looking for the hot tamale train. What is the hot tamale train? <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and Mary Murphy is a treasure. Can you tell us? <laughs> ah, tamale. She just, every time there was a really good dancer, she would say, somebody's hopping on the hot tamale train. <laughs> and then she'd usually scream in a really high-pitched voice, and it was a beautiful thing. It's a thing of joy. Kelsey, you've still got control of the board. False pretenses, taking? 800. False pretenses for 800. This alleged arsonist was not truly responsible for starting the Great Chicago Fire. Nobody quick buzzing in. Is anybody willing to risk it? No. <clears throat> we were looking for Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Who is Mrs. <laughs> O'Leary's cow? Very famous, but apparently not so famous anymore. Rhyme. <laughs> it's OK. Kelsey, you've still got control of the board. False pretense is a thousand. I'm sure that'll be better. <laughs> this is, I think, the third thousand you've risked it on. So think, think, think deeply. The ruler of this Ptolemaic dynasty, a Greek family, was not actually Egyptian. I said Ptolemaic. It's Ptolemaic. There's no, there's no P. It's not. It's like pterodactyl. Kelsey buzzed in at the last minute. Who is Cleopatra? That is correct. Your first correct thousand dollar answer. Love to see it. it. Finally pays off. What a what a Cinderella story. Bring your total points up to four thousand eight hundred. A commanding lead. It's a where... Cinderella story, but I'm the pumpkin. Um, colorful <laughs> language eight hundred. Colorful language for eight hundred. 
This celebration turned deadly for mother and son in the hit television show, Game of Thrones. Nick and Mary Rose. What is the Red Wedding? That is correct. Fast on the buzzer. It pays <laughs> off. There you go. I saw you two jumping. Elliot, Kelsey, get faster. Get faster. I was jumping away because I don't know anything <laughs> about Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, Nick and Mary Rose, that brings you up to 2000, and you've now taken control of the board from Kelsey. Where to next? Let's stick with colorful language for 600. Colorful language, 600. An orange slice is the traditional garnish for this beverage, named for an occasional lunar phenomenon. Nick and Mary Rose. What is a blue moon? That is correct. Blue moon. A very unique marketing campaign. What do you want? All right, we're going to stick. Sticking with colorful language for 400. Right. Excellent. Originating in Philadelphia in the 1950s, this has been the busiest shopping day of the year since 2005. Elliot with the first buzz in. What is Black Friday? That is correct. Black Friday. Trampling others. <laughs> It's a tradition that we're always going to hold on to. That gives you another 400 points, bringing your total up to 5,200. Elliot, you've got control of the board. I'm going to pass it to Kelsey. Passing it to Kelsey. Kelsey, control of the board. Um, colorful <laughs> language 200. Colorful language for 200. This is quite a colorful way to say a special aptitude for gardening. Marcia, with a quick buzz in. What is a green thumb? That is correct. A green thumb. 200 points. Go to team three, bringing them up to 600. Marcia, you've got control. Where to next? Um, hot things for 400, please. Hot things for 400. This warm, relaxing invention was modeled on Roman Caldaria and makes an effective time machine. Nick and Mary Rose with the buzz in. What is the hot tub? That is correct. Nice one. The classic movie hot tub time machine. Everybody underestimates it. <laughs> Megan Mary Rose, you've got control of the board again. We have 3,000 points. Where to? Hot things for 200, please. Finishing off the category. There are many variations to this sausage sandwich, including the Franks sold at Fenway Park. Oops. Megan Mary Rose, you buzzed in too quickly. Yes. Kelsey, you've got the answer. Hot dog? That is correct. Is a hot dog. Oh, and that is 200 points going to team one, bringing them up to 5,400. Kelsey. Potent potables, 400. Mm, a risky category for you. Is it? I'm a bartender. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this decadent <laughs> cocktail contains cream and creme de cacao, but gets its signature colorful from creme de menthe. Nick and Mary Rose with a quick buzz in. What is it, grasshopper? That is correct. <laughs> I'll tell you what my confusion was. That was actually the $400 answer, and I think we said 200 but that might be my confusion. That brings you up to 3400 And also my confusion at Kelsey not knowing that it was a grasshopper. It's Kelsey, do you want to explain yourself? I work at a country club, and they all drink whiskey and beer, so... <laughs> if all they're drinking is whiskey and beer, does that really qualify you as a bartender? I'm licensed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Nick and Mary Rose, you have control now. I am being told that the reason for the category switch up was there was a cat laying on the computer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to take us? <laughs> Let's go to Potent Potables for 200, please. Potent Potables for 200. This decadent cocktail contains cream and chem de cacao. Oh, nope. Wrong one. <laughs> Because <laughs> that was the last one. It was the mix. Yes, but it's fine. You need this type of liquor fermented from grain or potatoes to make a Moscow mule. Okay, now, Kelsey, redemption time. What is vodka? That is correct. What is vodka? 200 points go to team one. And my little mix up joke landed flat. It's okay. <laughs> we all are, we're just trying. Kelsey, you've got control of the board. False pretense is 200. False pretense is for 200. 
this diminutive French general, standing at five foot six, was actually taller than the average French soldier at the time. And a buzz in from Kelsey. Who's Napoleon? That is correct. Napoleon Bonaparte. Everybody was shorter back then. Who would have thought? And Kelsey, I'm afraid you don't get to choose where to go this time. There's only one question left. That means we're going to false pretenses for 400. This French queen likely never spoke her most famous quotation, let them eat cake. And a buzz in from Kelsey. Is Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette is correct. And you have been the fastest finger this whole round. I'd like to thank RCN. Um. <laughs> you have brought your team total up to 6,200 for team one, Kelsey and Elliot. Nick and Mary Rose, you're in second with 3,400 going into final Jeopardy. And team three, you do have 600 points, but you are not out of the game yet. No. You're in exactly the same position as the winner of our episode one team. Ooh, so. <laughs> This, this question is going to be quite important. Let me reset up my setup after my dog knocked over my stuff. <laughs> and we are going to go into Final Jeopardy. And your category today is going to be poetry. Poetry is the category. Yes, I'm a literature major. Yes, I am sticking with things that I know. Poetry is the category. Confer with your teammates. Decide how much you are going to risk. And I'm going to ask each and every one of you to private chat that amount that you're going to risk over to my colleague Jody in the control room. That's just to keep you honest. We're going to just ask you what you bet. Hold on, Fufi's talking to me in my head. Yes, Fufi, that is a poetry question, believe it or not. <laughs> it's, an, it's an inauspicious signal that you didn't recognize that's a poetry question. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, does everybody have their bets decided on? Jody, who are we still waiting from? We're waiting on team three, Tracy and Marcia. Yeah. We'll get that. Are you kibitzing with each other? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to, in a moment, hear me doing the Jeopardy theme. So I want to warn all of you in advance, it's not going to be pleasant. But we have all of our bets in. We are going to reveal the prompt for you. And we will let you confer amongst yourselves. According to Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Kubla Khan decreed a stately pleasure dome in this Inner Mongolian capital. Do 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 we would have music for you, my wonderful audience, but it's all copyrighted. I'm afraid we can't. But thank you for joining us for this game of Jeopardy. It has been a pleasure spending an evening with you. I'm excited to see who has won. Our timer has run out, but I do need answers from every single one of you. So please continue kibitzing for a little bit if you need to. We are doing this virtually, so it's very difficult. But I do want you to send your answers over to Jody. Jody, how many answers do we have in? <gasps> we have two answers in. I believe in you. We're getting there. It's going to be fun. Who knows poetry? All of you look confused. I think I've stumped you. <laughs> Still waiting. Jody, who are we waiting on? We're all good. Excellent. So with that, I am going to turn first to team three. Tracy and Marcia, how confident are you feeling about this question? Marcia, you think you got it? I don't. <laughs> you, just, you don't? Tracy, how about you? No, I, I think my answer is a little embarrassing. Did you take a wild I, guess there? I okay. Kind of a wild guess. That's, that's perfectly acceptable. What did you put down? Okay. What's your answer? What is Istanbul? That is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Incorrect. I'm sorry. How much did you risk on that question? 
Thanks to Marcia, only two dollars. <gasps> only two dollars. Fantastic one. choice. Is that is going to bring your total yeah. to five hundred and ninety-eight. Not bad. And Not I bad. It's more than our last winner had. I will say that you're <laughs> uh, you're in a strong Thanks, position Marcia. entering this. Nick and Mary Rose, I'm going to turn to you next. You've got the next highest amount. Do you think you've got it? How we confident did, are you in this answer? We did a similarly embarrassing thing. Similarly embarrassing. <laughs> I'm loving it. This is beautiful. This is great content. What's your answer? Take a what shot. Is... You say Istanbul. We say Constantinople. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of you, but that is also incorrect. <laughs> How much did you guys oh, risk on this? Unfortunately, 3,000. 3,000. 3,000. Ah, that means you're out of the running. You're certainly not our winners. That brings you down to $400. Oh. Team three, you're in the lead. Well, kind of. <laughs> it all comes down to team one now. I know. Kelsey, uh, I'm going to ask you first. How okay. confident are you that you alone got this answer? <laughs> um, I got, I don't know. I'm, I'm confident. I, yeah. You're I'm confident. confident. Okay. Sure. Good, good. Elliot, how about you? Did you know this one on your own? I'm confident that we're closer to I'm confident the, we have a good guess. the world than everybody else. Sorry, but... are you confident? Are you confident that you're geographically closer to the answer or that thematically yeah. it makes more sense? I'm not confident that it's correct, but I'm definitely, it's, it's definitely in the right. It sounds you know, like it could be a good answer. You know? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have enough country. stalling for me. Let's give it a shot. Kelsey and Elliot, what did you answer? What is Timbuktu? Ooh. That is incorrect as well. Unfortunately, we were looking for Foofy the Big Reveal. Xanadu. Xanadu, Xanadu or Shangdu. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree where Alf, the sacred river, ran through caverns wow. measureless to man down to a sunless sea. That's the poem, Foofy. It is a poetry question. <laughs> <laughs> I was not misleading. Now, the, all that we have left to do is ask Kelsey and Elliot, how much did you risk on this one? It went 601. 601. I don't like doing the math on that one. That's very rude to all of us. It brings you down to 5,599, I believe. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're, you're, you're such a help. That's right. 5,599, five, Foofy. And that keeps you in the lead. You are our winners for today's Jeopardy! Team 1, Kelsey and Elliot, congratulations. Everybody clap because we don't have enough audience. <laughs> well done. Well done. RCN well should win a done. little bit. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, that was beautiful. Again, nobody got the final Jeopardy! question right, which I think means I picked a great prompt. I won't let anybody tell me otherwise. <laughs> It has been an absolute pleasure having all of you with us this evening, uh, from all the contestants that we see on screen to all the participants that we don't. Um, this is always so fun to run. Um, we will see, we will likely run another one, but we did write all these questions by hand, as you can tell. So it is a bit of an endeavor. We'll see what we can come up with. Uh, keep an eye on the MyTAC newsletter for our next announcements. And if you're looking specifically to see me at another MyTAC event helping to host, I will be helping to host the Pasta Talk in January with my friend <laughs> Jess, the Oceanic Librarian Jordan. It will be a wonderful time. We're going to make three types of pasta with two different types of doughs. And I think we're going to let you vote on which kind of dough and which kind of filled pasta shape. Don't quote me on that because we haven't made the poll yet. But it's been wonderful spending the evening with all of you. Um, everybody say goodbye. Bye. Anybody thank want to say you. anything to you too? <laughs> thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> Elliot. Kelsey. Nice meeting everybody. Congratulations, Kelly. I mean, Elliot and Kelsey. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for everybody us. at the next yeah. one. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>